Good evening and welcome, beloved family and dear friends and roundtable group clients and partners. And especially, especially welcome and thank you to my amazing beloved Mont Blanc family, Teresa and Mercedes and Jason and the amazing Mont Blanc team who have made this whole event possible. And tonight's program is a little bit unusual and I hope fun <laughs> is meant to celebrate my new book called The Scholar's Treasure which I have been working on for 10 years <laughs> and so as of this very moment I am officially an author and as an author I think I get to pick a pen name like a nom de plume and I have chosen Penman <laughs> as my nom de plume and that's because the incredible Mont Blanc family have allowed me to build this collection of rare and I think quite beautiful Mont Blanc pens which are an important part of my book uh, so I think what's unusual about the scholar's treasure uh, is that it's filled with images of Mont Blanc pens I have selected a pen for basically every important moment of my life. A few of you here actually read my book, all 300 pages, and survived it, so thank you for that. The book is entitled The Scholar's Treasure and is about my exploits along with my co-founders of Roundtable Group, Bob and Chris, in the wonderful world of expert witness search and referral. Uh, and the book is filled with insights and learnings and treasures, if you will, from 30 years of working with professors and elite lawyers and amazing partners in the context of expert witness engagements. And we, next year, will be celebrating our 30th anniversary of what was once a dorm room startup and 30 years ago this day Roundtable Group was already fully conceptualized as a business in which we hope to introduce professors to consulting engagements and me and Bob and Chris started this company frankly in a college dorm room because we didn't think anyone would actually hire us for a real job so roundtable group was meant to be our plan b uh, and uh, has turned into plan a b c and d because we've been working at it for our entire professional lives so the scholar's treasure is really my memoir uh, and story of the founding of this company which I highly commend to everyone to write a memoir because it was a very delightful experience to look back on my life and think about all these treasures that I learned over the course of the years and one of my earliest memories in childhood growing up in Parsippany, New Jersey, had to do with my mom and dad inviting all of their friends and family members to a slideshow, a good old-fashioned slideshow. I remember my dad lovingly preparing slides and unfurling the projector and darkening the room. And um, the slides, I remember, <laughs> were um, quite troubling for me back then. They were a little bit weird. I recall like urinals in Paris in the 60s and absolutely grotesque pictures of me wearing a patch in my early days. And so I would like to, this evening, do a little slideshow for you about the book. Uh, but instead of slides, I intend to use pens. <laughs> and so we'll call it sort of a pen slideshow. And again, thank you, deep, deep gratitude to Mont Blanc for hosting us tonight and for <laughs> really allowing me to build this collection. And so the first sort of pen slide, and by the way, 
over the next 10-15 minutes, I will be sharing with you basically a summary of the book uh, and its contents. So uh, no need to actually read the 300 pages because I'm giving you a, a, a nice overview of it. So the first pen slide is one of my very favorites. It's this truly exquisite and magnificent spider metamorphosis pen, uh, which I have paired with Mont Blanc's Chinese New Year, Year of the Pig pen, and Year of the Rooster pen, and Year of the Dog pen, as well as their new Brothers Grimm pen. Um, and these pens are meant to pay homage to a very special time in my life growing up in Parsippany. I had a very joyful childhood riding my bike and reading wonderful children's books like Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. I happened upon a signed copy of the book, and this is an actual piece of artwork by the artist named Garth Williams, and, and here is E.B.'s beautiful signature. Uh, and so really, this is an example of, again, my gratitude to Mont Blanc for allowing me to be a little innovative in this pen collection and pair the pens with signed books and first edition books and cool pieces of art and even digital artworks. Um, so these first series of pen slides are in honor of my parents, Marcia and Fred, who made this magnificent childhood possible. So my other favorite childhood memories have to do with my amazing brothers, Lance and Andy, uh, who really over the years have been magnificent mentors and brothers and friends. And my experience of joy with my brothers has doubled in recent decades with my wonderful sisters-in-law, Gillian and Susan. And so these pens are meant to honor my brothers and sisters-in-law. This is the incredible Miles Davis trumpet pen, which is paired with the George Gershwin clarinet pen in honor of my brothers and sisters-in-law. I spent a lot of my favorite childhood memory time secretly in Lance and Andy's bedrooms, listening to their jazz albums and classical music albums and rock and roll albums and have had a lifelong love affair with music because of that. So thank you, bros. And uh, I have paired these pens with other Mont Blanc pens that honor conductors like Sir George Schulte of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra fame and Arturo Toscanini. And I also have a pretty cool collection of signed autographs and photos of famous conductors and classical musicians and rock stars. Uh, and so that was a very special part of my life that I documented in my book. But then, but then my life took a dark turn when I turned 13 in junior high school and in Hebrew school at the Lake Hiawatha Jewish Center, which I document in vivid detail in the book about that adolescent rite of passage that in my case went terribly wrong and I had to redo at the age of 50, <laughs> which I uh, tell you about in my book. So the next pen slide about that era is this beautiful Victor Hugo pen, uh, which I present to you in honor of my good friend Aaron Mandel. Uh, thanks for coming all the way from North Carolina. And Aaron helped me through many of those <laughs> um, childhood challenges uh, during which I really felt like a character from a Victor Hugo book. Um, I felt like Quasimodo or one of the Les Miserables characters. And uh, you know, the really cool thing about collecting these Mont Blanc pens is, you know, you can't own a pen like this unless you read the books. So I actually read Les Miserables twice, um, cover to cover, as well as Victor Hugo's other great books. And as part of this collection, I somehow managed to find a signed copy of a Victor Hugo book, his book of poetry. And there's his signature from like 18, 
42 or something like that. Um, so Victor Hugo, a very important part of my life. And it wasn't all bad though, this kind of ages 13 to 15. Uh, I had some really fun aspects of my childhood during those years, which I document in the book with this pretty exquisite heavenly dragon pen, as well as the Homer pen, and a very, very special Rudyard Kipling pen, because first of all, I was able to read Rudyard Kipling's books in seventh grade English class, which was such a special experience. We also read Homer in English class, but especially <laughs> we read Tolkien and The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings day and night. And my friends and I played Dungeons and Dragons incessantly for probably three or four years straight. Um, so these pens are in honor of all my high school friends who really created a very fun and special experience for me during those years. Another really cool thing happened to me during that time in 1983 or so. I fell in love with art and artists and was able to attend the grand opening of the Andy Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh with my brother Andy. Uh, and so here is a beautiful Andy Warhol pen. And that experience really unlocked a time in my life of falling in love with art and artists that has a, continued to this day. And again, thanks to Mont Blanc, I was able to acquire a beautiful Michelangelo pen. This is Michelangelo's David carved into the pen with actual Italian marble. It's just a highly innovative and magnificent writing instrument. Um, and this pen is also meant to pay homage to my time at Northwestern University when I discovered something. I discovered something really cool at Northwestern. Two things. One is what I might call academic self-confidence. Uh, for the first time in my life, I became confident in my ability to like work hard and study and like get an A on a paper, which was like a new thing for me. Um, and also, Northwestern really unlocked the whole roundtable group business idea because my professors at Northwestern were so good. Like I didn't even know teachers could be this great. I had an experience with Professor Hayes during one of his history of modern Germany classes in which he'd be like lecturing about the rise of the Third Reich and Hitler and in such vivid detail and thoroughness that the class would end and like none of us could move because we were all terrified. And I had another class with Professor Lacey Baldwin Smith about the history of England where I got introduced to the world of chivalry um, and the legends of King Arthur. Um, and those experiences at Northwestern really created the idea of round table group these professors who are such superb teachers, shouldn't they be like consultants? Shouldn't they be experts, paid experts? Um, I was trying to be a management consultant. I was trying to get hired by a consulting firm, but I was like 22 and like knew nothing. The idea of professors as experts, as consultants, really is what gave birth to Roundtable Group. And it was at this time, you know, after the UK and after Egypt and after these travels, it became time to quit the day job, as we say, and start Roundtable Group full time. Uh, but there was one thing sort of missing from, from that dream, which was we had no money um, and we were about to be unemployed. Um, and so this special pen uh, in honor of Borghese, um, which I have paired with this Mont Blanc pen in honor of Sir Henry Tate. Um, Borghese and Tate were famous benefactors of artists and entrepreneurs. Um, and I dedicate these pens to Grandma Betty, uh, who at that time gave me $10,000. 
um, which was like more money than I ever imagined could exist in the world. And it was that gift um, that allowed us to quit our day jobs and to, and to go all in on this roundtable group adventure. So, you know, I wrote a lot in the book, not just about Grandma Betty, but about all four of my grandparents. And I got to thinking like, do any of you even know the names of all your grandparents and great grandparents and those that came before them? You know, in my case, coming from Jewish, Russian, Polish, origins, you know, it probably wasn't that enjoyable uh, for my ancestors. Um, and so this $10,000 that Grandma Betty gave me um, really in my mind was like the result of like hundreds of years of my ancestors scrimping and saving and finally making it to Ellis Island and making it so that my parents could become professionals and teachers who themselves allowed me and my brothers to become professionals and entrepreneurs. So the Borghese and the Tate pen are in homage to Grandma Betty and to all of the ancestors that came before them. And so the next pen slide or pen chapter is about a part of my book in which I write about graduating from Northwestern and starting Roundtable Group, but I also Somehow, I don't know how, I got hired by a consulting firm, my first and only real job. It was Price Waterhouse. And uh, I had a pretty fun and joyful experience at Price Waterhouse, except for the beginning. We had this training program in Tampa, three months, and I thought I was going to be like this strategy consultant. And it wasn't that though, it was IT consulting, <laughs> information technology. I kind of didn't know about that. Um, and my good friend David Ting here, <laughs> who I met during that time, and we're still good friends, uh, along with my other classmates, were like, were like well-trained in every imaginable computer language. And back then, 1993, 94, it was still the era of mainframes. So I had to learn COBOL and I just couldn't get it. Um, so this is a really special Disney pen that Mont Blanc came out with a year or two ago. And I dedicate it to David Ting for <laughs> so graciously helping me through that tough era. David ended up becoming a management consultant at Disney. Um, and so this Disney pen is in honor of David Ting. Um, and one of the other cool things about my time at Price Waterhouse is I got to spend a year in England, a year in the UK. And um, it was a pretty special year because I was able to work hard as a Price Waterhouse consultant for my client Sony and I was able to continue working on Roundtable Group, basically recruiting professors on evenings and weekends and any free time. And it was also a time of very joyful travels, mostly around the UK. Um, and so I have a very special Queen Victoria pen as part of the new Victoria and Albert collection that I love so much. I've actually made it my daily use pen. Um, and I had really such a great time in England that I managed to find a book by Queen Victoria herself uh, and it's about her time and travels in Scotland and and it's signed by her and this is the <laughs> magnificent signature of Queen Victoria which I have paired with the Queen Victoria pen in homage to my year in England. And it was also during this time that I was able to travel throughout Europe and the Middle East during that era. And one of my favorite trips during that time was to Egypt, where I became a huge fan of ancient and modern Egypt and I caught Egyptomania. <laughs> and this is the highly, highly interesting and beautiful and innovative Mont Blanc Egyptomania pen, only one of 72, that is built as a sarcophagus with um, the pen being, you know, the mummy living in the sarcophagus. And I just love this pen so much. And it reminds me of 
those special times traveling throughout the Middle East. I have paired this pen with another favorite Mont Blanc pen, this one, the Semiramis pen, which I also just love so much. I write with it, <laughs> one of the few pens that I write with daily. Um, and Egyptomania and Queen Victoria and this beautiful pen, Semiramis, which is an homage to the exquisite hanging gardens of Babylon <laughs> that I think Mont Blanc beautifully portrayed. Um, these pens are in, also in homage to my time with my amazing wife Lucy in the Middle East and in Israel and in the Holy Land. And I document in the book some very special experiences in Israel particularly in the Palestinian territories in which Lucy and I and our team cooked up an idea focused on really peace in the Middle East and working to connect Palestinian entrepreneurs with American entrepreneurs and Israeli entrepreneurs and we had many many projects including bringing a team of medical specialists and US based ophthalmologists to travel throughout Israel and throughout the Palestinian territories delivering medical services and healing people's eyes and conducting eye surgeries um, so that was a very, very special time in my life that I have documented in the books via these particular pens. Now, after enjoying global travels in the UK and having an enjoyable experience as a Price Waterhouse Management Consultant, it became time, finally, around 1995-96, as they say, quit the day job and to become an actual entrepreneur. And in 1997, me and Bob and Chris actually quit our day jobs and dedicated our lives uh, to becoming entrepreneurs and to running Roundtable Group full time. And we happened upon in 1997, a breakthrough that allowed Roundtable Group to go from a struggling startup to beginning to have serious success. And the breakthrough occurred when we entirely by accident got a call from a litigator, uh, an attorney, my good friend Kimball Anderson at Winston & Strawn, who had an urgent need for a variety of professors to serve as expert witnesses in a court trial. And it was this magnificent aha moment in which it really unlocked our whole professional career path. We, at that very instant in 1997, pivoted and turned Roundtable Group into an expert witness search and referral company. It was the first of its kind, in my biased opinion. And I really want to honor that time in our journey with this truly exquisite Mont Blanc Sir Arthur Conan Doyle pen, uh, which pays honor to the Sherlock Holmes character and actually has a magnifying glass built into it. It's a very special pen and I dedicate it to Bob and Chris and to all the employees at Roundtable Group because my professional life kind of reminds me of a Sherlock Holmes story. And thanks to the Mont Blanc family and this pen, I actually, at the age of 50, read every single Sherlock Holmes story because how can you own such an exquisite pen without reading the books? Uh, and so I'm just really reminded, you know, in my professional life every day, we help lawyers find expert witnesses to win their cases. And each matter, each search request for an expert that we get reminds me of a Sherlock Holmes story. There's like a victim, there's if not an actual crime, there's a corporate version of the crime, perhaps a patent was allegedly stolen or a contract was violated and um, there's colorful characters and suspects and an expert needs to be hired to solve the case and so the experts are kind of like Sherlock Holmes and I document really the formation of Roundtable Group and unlocking this insight about becoming an expert witness company 
in my book, The Scholar's Treasure. The next part of my exploits that I document in my book is somehow, I'm not sure how, but I got accepted to business school at the University of Chicago. And I had many years at the University of Chicago, first in business school, and then I attended their sort of famous great books program called the Basic Program, in which I got to read many of the great books, particularly Greek and Roman important works. Um, and a few years later, I actually became an advisor to the department chairs at the University of Chicago. And so I memorialize that time in my life with this quite amazing Hadrian pen. Hadrian was one of the few good emperors. Um, and Hadrian's sign was the Phoenix. Um, and the University of Chicago's motto is the Phoenix. Um, and so in my book, I document many of our exploits in business school. It was a very special time because it was the dot-com era from 1997 to 2000. Uh, and I document in the book quite a few what I might call Greco-Roman tragic comedies that happened to me and Roundtable Group with some of our professors. There's betrayal stories. There's employee stories. And uh, it was a... It was both a dark and joyful <laughs> time of my life um, that I pay homage to with this really exquisite Hadrian pen. <laughs> so what happened next in my journey, starting after I graduated from business school in 2000 until around 2007, um, we actually, <laughs> to our surprise, became pretty successful uh, and it turned out lawyers first a few dozen and then hundreds and then thousands of lawyers like actually really needed to engage expert witnesses to help win their cases and it you know was just very time consuming and expensive for lawyers to do this on their own so it just by miracle a round table group kind of I think accidentally started a new industry called expert witness search and referral and we started really succeeding. Um, and so this era in my life is memorialized by Mont Blanc's really, really, I think, exquisitely crafted and highly innovative Napoleon pen, which was actually the very first pen in my collection. Um, and it just kind of reminds me of the epic battles and good fights uh, that we had during our years of growth from 2000 to 2010. Uh, I have paired this pen with um, a signed photograph of the Duke of Wellington, <laughs> who is the only one to have actually bested Napoleon <laughs> at the famous Battle of Waterloo. Uh, and have also paired it with a very lovely Mont Blanc pen called the Tsar Nikolai the First pen. So those three, Napoleon and Tsar Nikolai and the Duke of Wellington, were constantly in battle shaping European history. Um, and just first of all reminded me of <laughs> the many fun battles, some won, some lost, that we faced during our years of roundtable group growth. And uh, also, I pay homage in my book to the real warriors of today uh, that I know and love, our veterans, uh, and particularly my good friend Antoinette here, who uh, is not only served in our military, but became a lawyer and started the Veterans Legal Institute, which helps our veterans with legal matters, and Roundtable Group is very proud to support the Veterans Legal Institute and many other sort of charitable organizations related to legal services. So the next thing that happened in my book is <laughs> after these surprising years of growth, we actually got acquired <laughs> by a company called Thomson Reuters, my <laughs> favorite company in the world. Um, and, uh, and it was during this time in 2010, not only did we have this 
rare and joyful acquisition, but I also married Lucy, so 2010 truly was the best year of my life. Um, and I pay homage to that time in my life, selling the company and marrying Lucy and going on some very fun global travels with this very, very special Mont Blanc pen in honor of Saint Exupéry. Uh, because when Lucy and I first met and fell in love, she would read Le Petit Prince to me every night. Uh, and this pen is shaped like an airplane, and Lucy and I had some exquisite and lovely travels around the world. Um, and it was, you know, kind of an unusual time for me from 2010 when I sold the company uh, to about 2019 <laughs> um, when we had a chance to really miraculously buy our company back. Um, and one of my favorite parts of my life during that era was meeting Lucy's amazing family, her parents and her many aunts and uncles and her cousins. Uh, and we had beautiful, they just took me in as one of their own. Uh, I felt like a family member to the Lou family from the start. And I want to honor Lucy's family with this really beautiful Mont Blanc pen that is about the Great Wall of China, uh, which I have actually climbed <laughs> um, with Lucy and her family. And we had many magnificent times in Beijing and enjoying Shanghai and Yantai and 10 other cities in China <laughs> with very adventurous and joyful experiences. So I have paired this pen with quite a few signed books by Chinese authors. Uh, and by one of the first Confucian authors. Um, and that was a very, very exciting and enjoyable part of my life that I document in my book. There was also a time around 2010 that I spent a significant amount of time in India. Um, and quite a few of the treasures of the scholars that I write about in my book, The Scholar's Treasure, are documented around this time in India with Eastern thinkers. Uh, and one of my favorite teachers, Swami Parasarathi. Um, and I talk about many of these learnings in my book. And I have not yet been able to acquire one of Mont Blanc's truly exquisite India-themed pens. But I am very proud to have a pen that pays homage to the very important culture and history of Native Americans. Um, and this is Mont Blanc's incredible Moctezuma pen, Moctezuma the um, First, which is just, I think, highly innovative and exquisite. Um, and really also reminds me of our acquisition by Thomson Reuters, which was great because I sort of converted my life's work into like cash, um, which had like pros and cons. It was nice to have like some money for the first time in my life, but I sort of lost my life as an expert witness guy and the whole sort of culture and lifestyle we created was kind of gone. And that's sort of what happened to Matazuma and the Mayans. Um, their treasures, their glorious culture and history um, got like converted to ingots of gold. Um, and I try to sort of tell that story in the book. So I really want to dedicate this pen to Bob and Sarah, particularly Sarah. Uh, Bob doesn't really like to receive honors because Sarah has really helped immerse me in the very important history of our Native American culture um, and really what U.S. history truly is about in a new light that I just didn't learn in high school. So thank you, Sarah. Now, the next pen slide or pen chapter in my book is around a very special Mont Blanc pen called the Maki pen, which pays homage to Japanese culture and art. Um, and reminds me of the times that Lucy and I and our good friend Yuko spent 
in Osaka and Kyoto and Tokyo. And by acquiring this pen, I immersed myself in Japanese culture and history. I actually read one of my favorite books called Shogun, <laughs> cover to cover, about Japan in the 1600s. Um, this beautiful version is signed by the author, James Clavel. Um, and uh, I am quite excited about the time I spent in Japan. And this pen represents our years traveling throughout the Far East together. Now the final pen chapter, or pen slide, of my book is one of Mont Blanc's latest pens called the Ascent to Mont Blanc in honor of the original climbers. And so the p final pen slide, or pen chapter, in my book is honored by Mont Blanc's beautiful Ascent to Mont Blanc pen, uh, which is in honor of Jacques Baumat. And this pen is really to honor Mont Blanc, uh, my very favorite company of all time, which has just taken me in like a family member. And thank you so, so much to Teresa and, and to Mercedes and to Jason and to the whole Mont Blanc team. Uh, which actually Mont Blanc invited me to Hamburg for the grand opening of the Mont Blanc house. Did you know that there's actually a pen museum <laughs> um, that Mont Blanc connected? It's magnificent and it's in Hamburg. Um, and thank you so, so much Mont Blanc family for hosting us tonight and for these incredible experiences. Um, and ascending a mountain is really what I'm feeling like for the final chapter of my book, The Scholar's Treasure, because in 2019, an amazing, miraculous thing happened. <laughs> we were able to buy our company back from Thomson Reuters. So sell high, buy back low. That's what I'm going for, for the tombstone. Uh, and it was a really, really uh, unique time of my life, buying the company back in 2019 and then the pandemic hit in 2020, uh, and then things started stabilizing, thank God, in 2021. And uh, we have just so, so many exciting plans uh, for the future, which I document in the book. So that is my life in pens. <laughs> and um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. It's really a summary of the book, The Scholar's Treasure. You no longer have to read the book uh, because I described to you all the things that I cover in this memoir and this business story about my love affair with Lucy and with music and with art and with the idea of peace in the Middle East and with faith and of course, with my beloved company, Roundtable Group, which has been on a heck of a ride over 30 years. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming, and I hope you enjoy my book, The Scholar's Treasure. <laughs>